Today's question comes from Amr. I hope I'm saying that right. It's A-M-E-R. Right. Amr. Hi, Amr. Okay. He says, hey, Ethan, love the show. You are an inspiration and have a way of relaying your experience in a super relatable way. I've struggled with my weight since childhood as well with drugs and alcohol. I've been sober for almost nine years, have worked a 12-step program, and continue to go to meetings. I've dabbled in OA too, but it seems to still be having issues getting my food issues under control. What gives? Do you have any thoughts on the 12 steps and food issues? Yeah. Well, first of all, congratulations on staying sober for that long, Amr. That's no small feat. Um, I do think there are a lot of uh, corollaries that can be applied from sobriety to uh, eating disorders or eating issues. Um, so I do think that that mindset is, uh, is correct, is useful, can be useful for some people. Um, I don't go to OA, but I do find a lot of similarities with my behavior around food and certain ways I have to comport myself in order to deal with food. Um, so I don't have a good, like you should do blah, but I, but I will say like, as a sober person, I would be thinking about it in a very similar way. That doesn't mean it has to be 12 steps. Um, uh, because if you're running into issues with that, maybe that's not the thing for you with this. I, I, I think food is so much more complicated at the end of the day because like in sobriety, we practice abstinence and uh, that's not what we're doing with food on any program, you know, but could you consider that there are certain, th certain areas um which you could recognize that leads you down a path that is not healthy with food that you would be willing to abstain from. I, I would think about it almost in that way more so than in literal terms, right? I cannot drink alcohol because it ruins my life. So I just don't drink alcohol, um, which I think is far easier said than done, right? There's a lot of work that goes into that. But at the end of the day, I am fighting that thing, which is, which I, I, I know where it leads. And now I have to, I have to also recognize that like going to a bar with my friends could make that more difficult. Certain social situations could make that more difficult. Um, even sitting alone in my house for too long, uh, could make that more difficult and adjust my life accordingly in that way. Could you apply those principles, um, to your issues with food that that's what I would, that's what I would look at. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have like a, a, an easy one word solution like keto or OA for food. For me, it was really took a long time to, um, you know, with sobriety and though I failed at it a number of times, it was like, okay, on day one, I am just being sober. And then it was like on day two, maybe I'm going to start to make adjustments to my life to make sobriety easier. And years later, I wake up and it's like my life is completely different. And and that is a, a very similar thing with getting my, my, uh, my, my relationship with food under control. It's, you know, figuring out a plan that I, that I believe I can stick to or, you know, a long-term plan. And then it's just day one, I'm on my plan. And day two, I'm recognizing all the near failures I had on day one and trying to beatrice myself up better against them and create a more solid foundation so that, you know, 15 years later for me dealing with food, my life is completely unrecognizable in, in those terms, but it, it, it took a long time to figure it all out. Um, I think that 
persistence is important and resilience is important. And, you know, as a sober person with nine years sobriety, I'm sure you, you've either experienced going out yourself or seeing people go out and come back in and the shame associated with that can be detri detrimental to getting back on a program. And so you got to give yourself that too, you know, the, the ability to get back into it um, when you fall off.